nationals. We are focusing on the row that is currently playing out in WIPA over the nomination of uh, WIPA leader Kanonzo Musioka San to the East African Legislative Assembly. And then later on, we'll also try and look at police recruitment. And there are people who are not very happy with how that process was conducted. But for now, we are turning our guns on Iyala nominations and the fact that WIPA leader Kalondo Musioka's son was nominated quite an uproar yesterday, especially in Parliament. Um, we had from leader majority Edin Duale who says he will try and see if he can stop this entire process. Jakoyo Midiwo asking the Speaker of the National Assembly not to accept that list. So let's have a conversation um, on this with Jesse Odor. He's a lawyer. Uh, but apart from picking his legal mind, we will uh, pick his mind as well as a political analyst. Thank you for joining us on News Center um, this morning. First of all, um, yeah. now that you're a lawyer, and this is free consultation anyway, yeah. um, the Kenyans will be deported from uh, United States. Do yeah. you think that has anything to do with uh, Trump saying he doesn't want immigrants in his country, or are there genuine reasons why people actually, they may have been deported? Uh, th thanks, Linda, for having me around. Uh, first, I think... Uh, Trump's uh, policy with regard to immigrants, I think, doesn't affect the deportees. Uh, give, this is given the fact that is, there are court orders that is barring the implementation of that immigration as it is right now. Oh, so now there are court orders mm. that are barring They are barring that, yes. That, uh, that, 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 that court order has not been nullified yet. The case is still ongoing. And therefore, Frank, uh, Trump cannot implement that. So clearly this has nothing to do with Trump. Clear, yeah, it has got nothing to do with Trump. If it was something to do with Trump, then all the countries that Trump had initially blacklisted mm. will be receiving hundreds, if not thousands, of immigrants from America. So probably yes. they must probably have done something. Probably they must have done something else for them to have been, have been deported back. Okay, this is me really crossing my fingers that Cecilia can get to speak to some of them and just find out what exactly they did. All right, so now, Wiper, what are your thoughts on the fact that Kalonzo Musioka's son has been nominated to IALA? Uh, I, I, I like the way uh, the deputy party leader of WIPA, former speaker, deputy speaker, Paramalin puts it biological accident <laughs> <laughs> for Kennedy Musioka to be Kalonzo's son. Biological accident, <laughs> no, like no. seriously. Probably uh, Kennedy Musioka's parents will have issues with that, <laughs> calling their child a biological accident. Yeah. Uh, first, he might have been qualified mm. for the job. As WIPA puts, there were six uh, nominee applicants for that position. And he, according to WIPA, he was the most qualified uh, candidate. But then this is a political season. Anything you do is actually to be, is going to be read in a different context altogether. Because it's not new that political parties have been awarding cronies and family members ever since uh, this country got independence. It's mm. not new. But then uh, the mere fact why I think Kenyans are so much aggrieved is the fact that uh, the current administration has failed. It has shortcomings. The opposition is the alternative government. Yeah. And Kalonzo is the, is going, is the running mate running to, to, to Raila Odinga. And this is supposed to be the new team that is bringing Kenyan's aspirations on board. When you, you haven't even taken power yet and you've started showing us what you're going to do okay. in the name of nominating your son. I am so going to be the devil's advocate here. Listen, yeah. forget about the fact that he's Kalonzo's son. Yes. One, he is qualified. Yeah. Two, due process was followed. And he went through the entire process and actually emerged the best. Shideiko happy? Shideiko, uh, as far as says, uh, uh, biological accident, mm. the mere fact that he's Kalonzo son, no one is going to look at it objectively. As much as I started by saying he might have been the most qualified out of the six candidates who applied. But mere fact that uh, the father is the party leader of that party and nominates him speaks a lot. To Kenyans, it's not about how qualified he is. It's because you have relations to the party leader, you're getting favors. The same way Oburu had to withdraw his nomination. Because but Oburu Israel's was already father. nominated to parliament. Yeah. Beth Mugo was nominated to parliament. Why is Kalonzo's different? It's political season. It's about perception. This is your son. You want Kenya that is free of nepotism. Why are you practicing nepotism? And if you want to lead Kenya from a different tribalism and nepotism, why are you doing that? Mm. Yeah. Politics is about perce perception, Linda. Okay. The moment it is perceived that you are, you, are ex you are practicing nepotism, then votes go away. And actually, uh, to me, where I stand, I think it was a blunder on, on NASA to, to begin with, even to think of Oburu. Yeah, because um, looking at Oburu, and, and, and I remember that presser because that day I was, I was actually producing the one o'clock bulletin, yeah. and he said he had decided to... Um, not consider the nomination to focus on his brother's okay. presidential um, run. Yeah. And I sat there and I was like, you, he was nominated to parliament, and then now he's being nominated to Yala, 
You have Kalonzo's son being nominated to IALA as well. Yeah. And, and Deputy President William Ruto, actually speaking on the same thing, said opposition has demonstrated that it has no moral authority to lecture Jubilee on tribalism or nepotism. He actually has a say. He's, he's making sense, isn't he? To some extent, he's making sense. But then, look, this is a government that is only made up of two tribes from the president's tribe and the deputy president's tribe. Mm. I mean, from all posh appointments in this country, starting from cabinet, parastatals, and uh, e e even other independent mm. bodies that the, 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 the presidency have say. So they have exercised okay. that. And now, Jesse, last listen, time, yes? listen. Yes. I'm so sorry, I have to interrupt. Listen, yeah. I need to cross over. Um, uh, all oh, right, so there's, there's a, there should be a split screen on your screen any moment from now. That is the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights giving its presser on how the police recruitment was carried out yesterday. Remember, we lost a 27-year-old in Western um, region yesterday. Let's listen in. The journey to actualizing professional police recruitment in Kenya. The role of police and their contribution to governance in Kenya cannot be overemphasized. Their responsibility to guard the sovereignty of this nation is one that should be reflected upon at the point to which their recruitment into the surface begins. The Kenya National Commission on Human Rights has thus committed itself to the police reforms journey through monitoring of all recruitment exercises in the last four years to ensure compliance with laid down regulations. During the 2017 police recruitment process, the Commission was able to monitor 75 of the 292 centers that were used to vet potential candidates in the observations documented as follows. That the National Police Service and the National Police Service Commission continue to disregard critical sections of their own recruitment and appointment regulations since their gazettement in 2015. For example, the regulation calls for the application of a two-tier process that calls for advertisement of the positions, shortlisting of candidates, call for information on candidates through the media, and aptitude tests. There's need for uniformity in the application of the regulations, such as the requirement for a public announcement on the number of candidates to be selected at each center before commencement of the exercise. This was being applied at the discretion of the heads of the recruitment centers. That there is still some level of unpreparedness to deal with medical emergencies that arise from the candidates' participation in the physical exercise stage. There is need to have adequate on-site medical services that can prevent any loss of life, such as the one witnessed in Webuye, where a female candidate lost her life. There's need to put in place concrete affirmative action measures to ensure that more female candidates are recruited into the service. The ratio of successful male candidates remains way higher than that of their female counterparts. Recorded cases are as follows. In Takaba Primary School in Mandera County, there were 27 male recruits against one female recruit. In Sierra Stadium, CIA County, the male recruits were 30, while female recruits were 2. Kericho Green Stadium in Kericho County, 24 male recruits were recorded against 2 female recruits. At the Kakuma Airstrip in Turkana County, the number of male recruits was recorded at 32, while the female recruits were only three. In Kirigiti Stadium in Kambu County, there were 15 male recruits against three female recruits. In Kianyaga Stadium in Kirinyaga County, there was a total number of 18 male recruits against the recruitment of only three female candidates. There's need for better organization of the medical testing process that made the process in many of the monitored centers to go late in the night. Prescribed rules state that all processes must end by 5 p.m. to make the process devoid of mankind cases. 
The Commission notes the efforts made by both the National Police Service and the National Police Service Commission at strengthening the integrity of the process as has been demonstrated in the reduced corruption cases, conducting conduct of the panels and professionalism of medical panels and the general acceptance of independent monitors at the recruitment centers. However, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights remains particularly concerned that despite the gazettement of the regulations in 2015 to guide the important reform process, they are yet to be fully implemented, especially the important sections that have a direct effect of making the National Police Service professional. One of the key aspects of regulations is the inclusion of a, a, a process of aptitude tests of candidates and a public vetting process prior to the physical testing stage. The Office of the Inspector General of Police and the National Police Service Commission must take urgent measures to implement the regulations and to commit to have the same in place before the next recruitment process. The Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, we shall be submitting a final report to both the Inspector General of Police and the National Police Service Commission, a chairperson, for necessary action, uh, for action to be taken based on the requirements under each section. Thank you. Um, I think we'll be opening up this session for um, a Q and A question and answer. But um, just to add on what the chairperson has said, some of the concerns that we are still receiving, although by a considerable degree this have reduced uh, reported cases of corruption. Uh, we had a case which we are following Kimi that was reported again from Siaya County in Sawagongo High School, uh, which was the recruitment center where a potential recruit was being asked to cough or to pack with 120,000 Kenyan shillings even after the exercise had been done. And, um, this particular recruit had met all the requirements, so there was this additional hurdle of corruption where sure the, the recruit was required to pay this amount of money. These are things that we think uh, do not portend well for the whole exercise and it calls into question uh, the integrity of the exercise. And the National Police Service Commission should take every measure to ensure that these um, actions or these acts of bribery are not reported. We also had. Um, Again, uh, the chairs mentioned these challenges that we had last year with medical examination. And sitting here, my colleague uh, Patricia was reminding me, we've read the report, there were some places where they were forced to use makeshift mobile toilets as uh, a medical checkup. Those are live pictures uh, from the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights Headquarters, just uh, basically talking about the police recruitment and uh, the conditions that were there yesterday. Remember, um, there's a lady, 27 years old, who uh, died yesterday uh, during that recruitment exercise in Western Kenya. And they're basically raising concerns on the conditions that were on the ground for the recruits, um, saying uh, that whole process should have been done in a better way. Our Timothy Oteno is on the ground for us. He should be able to tell us, in a nutshell, what that whole presser has been about in a couple of minutes. Um, so as we wait for Timothy Oteno, allow me to continue with the discussion that I've been having in studio with Jesse Odor. He's a lawyer, so we're picking his mind as a legal mind and also a political analyst. Um, Jesse, because you're here and you're like my analyst, so let me ask you, what do you think about the police recruitment and how it was carried out, first of all? Uh, first, Linda, I think uh, lots of things happened, but then we have to go back to the root cause of the police recruitment exercise. I mean, in this century, why should be the qualification of recruiting police officers be about heights and someone running? You know, school? we were actually having that conversation at some point. <laughs> yeah. And they were saying... Guys, we need to move from yeah. having re police recruitment based on height, feet, the teeth, color of your teeth. The color of 
Okay, what does the color of my teeth have to do with police recruitment? <laughs> you, you know, the, the, this is a, it's a historical bureaucracy actually founded by the former President Moi. No, this would be a good time to speak to Msamali. <laughs> George Msamali, I'm hoping you can speak to him even if it's on phone. Then maybe he can help me to understand why yes. you have to focus on height, on, on feet, on teeth, on... <sighs> yeah, th th first it's historical. Moi started this because he wanted loyalists in the police after the coup. So for him to have loyalists, it was perceived that people from his tribe will not try to bring things. So this actually was tailor-made to suit Moi ethnicity. The height, people who can run, and then the teeth. Very much perfect. In fact, some time back before the new uh, constitution came into place, police officers were actually from one region more the percentage was actually more than 50. Oh, yeah, yeah, when you'd Remember hear people, yes. yeah. Even imitating a police officer, yeah. you had to have that Kale accent, you yeah. know. So we inherited that. And up to now, uh, crime has already evolved. Right now, the biggest security threat we have in our country is actually terrorism. You looked at the profile of these terrorists sometimes when they are arrested, these are university graduates. No, but remember, the Garissa University yes. um, attack, yeah. the leader was actually a university yes. guy. Some of them are engineers, you yeah. know, very brilliant minds. They have to be uh, able to assemble things, things yeah. and, and, you know, make it work. By the time they go to the university, they even have the layout structure of that university. Yes. You know, these are, they even, even know, like, these doctors, are the escape routes. We even know, have doctors here. You have here. doctors, you have engineers, you have... Yeah. They need people in all fields. All, all fields, yeah? yeah. You have people who can assemble a bomb in the kitchen and go and denote it here. And then you want somebody who best qualification Can to be a police officer is running and got a D minus to go and capture. It is so, you know, unfortunate. It's so unfortunate. Probably we just need to drum up support for people who. Um, have as in someone who can think, someone who can go beyond running and teeth and exactly. feet and everything. Because like the other day, yeah. um, we've seen some of the footage from Syria, some of the footage from Somalia, and even the shooting, the scripting. These are people who know what they're doing. Yes. You can't put them up against people who can just run. Yes, there is that. As much as all, I have to give credit. They also, the Kenya police... Our security also have the best brilliant minds. Mm. But then when it comes to the, the general, actually, the ones who are recruited who start from the lower They may rather, have the mind, they may Jesse, have them, yes. but look at the current recruitment. What's the qualification? You have to run. Mm -hmm. Your teeth has to be very white and mm -hmm. the height has to come in. Biological accident, you're out. Okay. The, if your parents are short like me and Academic you... Academic qualification, yeah, it's a it, D. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a what? You know? Yeah, that, that, that is my, yeah, you have to have a D plus yes. and above in KCSE. And right now there are no jobs. You have graduates who are suffering out but there I'd love, who don't I'd have love jobs. to hear from someone probably who got an A, yeah. a B plus, who probably has tried to get into the police. Of course they probably take, have been told. They, they no. take them, yes, but they're not like this. They now get from the higher credit. Some of them actually apply, but most of them will opt to go to the military. Our military is brilliant. Yeah, they do military, that. But when it comes to police, great. it's a, military, another different level. They want you to take you from D plus and then you'll go for other courses until you rise up. Why is it so different with the military? My friend, I've sat with military guys and those guys, brilliant. wow. Wow. You know? They're so brilliant. You sit with them, you're like, okay, okay, they know what they're doing. So probably we need to change how we, we do We need to this. change these things. There are several proposals. Actually, IPOA gave proposals, Kenya National Human Rights Commission gave proposals with the police reforms things. But then fighting a system that is so much entrenched about no, heights and running, uh, uh, that is what we are having now. Because like, like we both have said, um, the minds of criminals, the minds of terrorists have shifted. It's yes. not just... The basic thing. These it's are not the pickpocket. Yeah, it's not somebody who's going to steal your chicken. Doing. They know what they're doing. They can yeah. look at your system and infiltrate it. Yeah. They can look at your building and figure out what's the easiest point to get in. Yeah. <sighs> if somebody can assemble a bomb in a kitchen and then, yeah, you want to bring someone with a D plus whose best qualification was to run mm -hmm. and teeth and all that stuff with height, I mean, they can't be on the same level. Okay, listen, we'll speak to George Msamali in what, about 20 minutes. Yeah. He's a um, security analyst. Maybe he'll help us to understand. You'll still be here with me. Definitely. Then maybe we can ask him all these questions they're asking because maybe he'll be able to understand. <laughs> you know, you and I are civilians. Eh? We don't know what, <laughs> probably we have no idea how this is done. But then, listen, even if you're looking about physique, I mean, after less than two or five years, when you look at policemen, do they look the same way they were recruited? I mean, that thing go. These guys have bigger portfolios than mine. <laughs> after that, can that guy run? No. <laughs> and you said me and you, we can't get into the police force. First of all, you're very exactly. short. So, <sighs> Jesus, okay. We, we need new things <laughs> moving forward. People, you're watching <laughs> News Center. Thank you for staying with us.
Um, I'm just being made to understand that uh, we're focusing on the cost of living in the country. Remember, uh, Parliament was uh, recalled just the other day to have a conversation about the cost of living. And uh, yesterday we saw um, an arrival of uh, several tons of maize, I believe. We do understand there's another shipment that has just arrived uh, in the coast of Kenya, that's Mombasa. Can we take pictures from there? Yes, we can. There we go. Okay, so those are live pictures from Mombasa right now as we speak. Um, for, that is the port of Mombasa. We understand there's a ship that has just uh, arrived with uh, several tons of maize, hoping that this will reduce the cost of living for Kenyans. Remember, there have been such an outcry on the cost of living in the country. People cannot afford a, a simple maize meal. Sugar is a problem. And there are several ways that are now being implemented to ensure that the cost of living can be brought down for Kenyans. Uh, basically, people are saying life has become unbearable. So this is one of the measures that the government is putting in place to ensure that the cost of living can come down and indeed that it can feed its citizens. So those are live pictures coming to you from the port of Mombasa at this moment. should be good news. That should be very good news for a couple of people. Though there are people who were asking yesterday, okay, uh, how fast will it take before I get my hands on this uh, maze that is now arriving in, in, in the country? Um, there's a batch that arrived yesterday, I believe it was from Mexico. Um, so I'm hoping that we can get more information on the batch that has arrived today in the morning and get to speak to our colleagues on the ground as well. This is News Centre. We're focusing on the ALA nomination bra. We're focusing on the cost of living. We're focusing on police recruitment. This is a conversation that you can be part of. So this is how you become part of this conversation. You can tweet us at KTN News. You can tweet me at Linda Gutu. Please use the hashtag News Center so that I'm able to track the conversation. Let me take a break. We'll be back in a few minutes.